The threats are being ramped up over a vital oil shipping route which Iran is threatening to block. Tehran is holding large-scale war games in neutral waters near the Strait of Hormuz. The U.S. has its own contingent in the region too, mainly to ensure passage remains free. Bringing us up to date on this moving story, Guyana Chichikanch is in a Washington, uh, D.C. studio. Hi there, Guyana. Uh, what is America's response to Iran's latest moves again today? Well, Kevin, reacting to Iran's warning, the U.S. said no such disruption would be tolerated and that the U.S. Fifth Fleet that's based in the Gulf would ensure that doesn't happen. The Strait of Hormuz links the Gulf and the oil-producing states of Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to the Indian Ocean. And that's about 40 percent of the world's uh, oil that's shipped on tankers, by tankers, um, and, and that, that, that all passes through that strait. It's a major oil artery, and a potential cutoff of, uh, uh, might cause turmoil, turmoil in the uh, global oil market, although a Saudi official said that Gulf nations would, uh, you know, are ready to offset any loss of Iranian crude. From the statements that you, you get here uh, in Washington, you get a sense that Washington thinks Iran is bluffing because there have been such threats before, but Iran finds itself in a very uh, difficult situation right now where its uh, livelihood ba basically is in danger. The U.S. Congress passed a bill that uh, would dramatically complicate transactions through Iran's central bank. European and Asian nations import Iranian oil and use its uh, central bank for those transactions. And President Obama has yet to sign that bill. So that's going to be a severe blow to the Iranian economy. You can imagine around 40, around, um, excuse me, around 80 percent of its revenues, uh, you know, uh, depend on crude sales. EU ministers uh, said a decision on boycott of Iranian oil will be uh, made in the coming weeks. So Iranians sense that the West is now targeting their uh, livelihood. And the threats uh, that are coming from Iran indicate that it, it's ready to take action to protect its interests. If it did kick off at this flashpoint, what are the dangers for the region, indeed the rest of the world, other than the economic side of it? Well, Kevin, this could get very serious. You remember, I mean, we all remember the Suez crisis in 1956 nearly started a third world war. Iranians feel pretty much cornered right now. The West says, uh, you know, they will have to, um, it will have to do, uh, it, the Iran just has to give up uh, its nuclear program. Iran says they're not uh, doing anything wrong by, by pursuing a peaceful uh, nuclear program for civilian purposes. And that rhetoric here in Washington is very harsh against Iran. The U.S. spy drone shut down by the Iranians and before that Washington accusing Iran of plotting to kill the Saudi ambassador to the U.S. and blow up the Israeli and Saudi embassies in Washington. Those were just some of the most recent episodes. It all adds up and creates a lot of tension. Now if something happens over that strait of Hormuz, this could uh, erupt into an all-out war. Gali uh, certainly hope it doesn't come to that, but uh, we're a of course, very much across developments with your help there. Thanks for bringing us up to date uh, from Washington, D.C. Well, let's get some more comments on it now. Talk to Shirin Chaufei, a researcher at the uh, School of Oriental and African Studies in London, also representative of the campaign against sanctions and military intervention in Iran. Shirin, thanks ever so much for being with us. I don't know if you heard our correspondent there in, uh, in Washington, D.C. We'll pick up on some of that again. I mean, making threats like we've been hearing while performing a large-scale military exercise, isn't Tehran concerned it's going to be seen as a provocateur at the moment. Well, as your uh, correspondent rightly mentioned, Iran said that if an oil embargo is imposed against Iran and the Iranian livelihood, its economy uh, is threatened, then Iran would take uh, considerable uh, measures to uh, respond to that. So that is not a provocation. But in terms of a real provocation, uh, I think that what is provocative is uh, the United States sending its warships thousands of miles away from its home homeland into the Persian Gulf and also waging wars uh, surrounding Iran with wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, military bases all around Iran. That is provocative. And Iran is trying to defend this uh, national sovereignty and territorial integrity. We heard our correspondent there say that uh, her, her take was that America was basically saying this is a bluff. Um, however, of course, if it isn't a bluff, experts have said a military conflict in the Gulf is a threat to world peace. Could it escalate to that? 
Well, um, of course it could. Uh, we can remember in 1988 when there was um, a war between Iran and Iraq, Saddam Hussein invaded Iran mm -hmm. with the help of United States and other Western countries. The United States, it's a similar kind of warship, uh, shot down Iranian passenger flight uh, over uh, Iran's uh, territorial waters and killed all its uh, passengers who were all civilians and said that it uh, mis mistook the uh, Iranian uh, Airbus for um, F-14 Tomcat fighters. So we can see that if uh, tensions escalate, uh, these mismanagements and uh, further threats can also escalate and we can be uh, find ourselves in a very bad situation. In addition to everything that uh, your correspondent said about the rising oil prices and the very dire economic uh, situation globally, not just in the US or uh, in Europe at the, the moment. This isn't the first time Iran's made these threats. It did a similar thing, made a threat to block the uh, Strait of Hormuz back in 2008, didn't it? Um, which again we referred to it just now. Washington then uh, at that time said it would be considered an act of war. Uh, what are the parallels between what's happening now and what happened then? Well, uh, now we see that there are, we are seeing some unprecedented uh, aggressive measures coming from the West against Iran. For example, the uh, sanction against Iran's central bank or uh, the threats of uh, imposing an oil embargo against Iran, which according to many world politicians, including some American politicians, for example, the presidential candidate Ron Paul uh, said that this is an act of war in itself. The Russian foreign ministry said that this is a violation of uh, international law and is a tool for regime change. So we see that there is an, a further escalation of threats coming from the West, especially from the U.S. against Iran. And if uh, these threats escalate even further, which seems to be like that, well, uh, Iran's uh, actions will follow as well, reactions to this uh, threat. Shirin, if there's to be a diplomatic solution here somehow, which side do you think must make the first concessions? Is it to be Tehran by being more open about its nuclear program or maybe the EU and the EU? US by easing their drive to impose these crippling sanctions? Who should blink first, if you like? Well, and of course, uh, all sides should realize that what we are in now is a lose lose, completely lose lose situation. Everybody is going to lose from this, except for some military industrial complex in the, in the West. But if there is a diplomatic solution, we have a very good uh, nuclear deal between Iran, Turkey, and Brazil, which, uh, based on which Iran uh, sends its, uh, most of its low enriched uranium for uh, nuclear fuel rods, which Iran really needs for its Tehran research reactor. Uh, for diagnosis of um, complicated diseases like cancer for more than 800,000 patients. So that deal could be revived, although President Obama first supported it in, in April 2010 in his letters to leaders of Brazil and Turkey and then backtrack in the Security Council and impose more sanctions on Iran. So there should not be more confrontation. There should be participation. And one more thing that I want to mention is that wherever in the United States has intervened in the region, it has always brought death and destruction. Now, maybe it's a chance that the United States comes and facilitates negotiations with Iran and participate, uh, cooperate in Iran's nuclear program. That would be a nice thought for the new year, wouldn't it? Shirin Shafei from the School of Oriental and African Studies, thank you for your input to the program tonight.